you don't have to like Donald Trump to acknowledge that there is, in fact, this cult of personality around him. And that was evident from the very beginning, because even though he's a political figure, the policies that he's talking about don't make sense to a normal person. Like, you can acknowledge that there is, you know, a demand for xenophobia in America, but the specific policies that he's talking about, like in 2015, how he's going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Like, if you honestly believe that that's logistically possible, one, and that he's going to make Mexico pay for it, like, you're a stupid person if you believe that. I don't know what else to say. So, it's irrational. You know, cults are inherently irrational, and the support around Donald Trump is this cult of personality, and I feel as if the cult, like people within the cult, are getting more entrenched with the cult. They don't care that Trump hasn't followed through on his promises. Basically, what this is about now is loyalty to Donald Trump, and if you try to get through to them and convince them that he actually is hurting them, he's not producing policies that help them, then, you know, they're not going to try to think logically about this. They're going to lash out against you because you are telling them something that the hive mind is, you know, trying to get them to not believe. So, I mean, it's a cult. I think that most people realize this is a cult of personality. And we have a poll that pretty much confirms just that from CBS. So after four years of Donald Trump, a deadly pandemic and an economic recession, voters were asked whether or not America is better off now than four years ago. 35% of voters said yes, which is still, I think, way too high. 65% said no. But 75% of Republicans say yes. They're nuts. 75% of Republicans. How can you possibly look at the state of the world, the state of America, and think that things are better now than they were four years ago? You'd have to be delusional to think that. Like, even if... Bernie Sanders were the nominee and he got elected, I would still have to concede that things aren't better even if someone who I like is in power. Because objectively speaking, things are bad. The state of the country is rapidly deteriorating. We have a climate crisis. So, I mean, how can you say this, especially during a pandemic? Well, this is why. It's because of Donald Trump. Among Republicans, 82% say America is better because of Trump. 70% say because of the economy, 70% say because Democrats are not in power, and 64% say because of their own finances. So a solid portion uh, say, you know, they are doing better now financially, and obviously they are crediting Trump for that. But the, you know, overwhelming majority of people here, the Republicans polled, say that America is better off simply because of Donald Trump. I mean, if that doesn't show how this is a cult, then nothing else will. So long as their guy is in power, everything is copacetic. Doesn't matter the state of the country. It doesn't matter that we're dealing with a deadly pandemic that's highly contagious. As long as their guy is in office, everything is A-OK. -okay. So that's some evidence of this cult of personality around Donald Trump and that it's actually a thing. But this is where we start to get into delusional territory because once you accept that they're in a cult, then, you know, their perception of reality begins to get warped. And you kind of see this in these next polls. When it comes to the condition of the economy, only 35% of voters say it's good, 61% of voters say it's bad, but 67% of Republicans say it's good. So they believe Trump when he brags about the economy. Now, when it comes to how the U.S. handled coronavirus, 73% of Republicans say we're handling it well as a country, whereas 62% of voters say it's going badly. But 73% of Republicans say it's going well. You're wrong. So, I mean, you kind of see the trend here. Even though we handled COVID-19 about as uh, poorly as a failed state would, because Trump is the one in power and because they believe he can do no wrong, since Trump by default is good, then his handling of COVID-19 is good by definition. It doesn't matter how many people die. It doesn't matter how many times he, like, spreads misinformation or fumbles. It's good because anything Trump does is good. Now, they were asked about the number of deaths due to COVID-19. 57% think the number of deaths is acceptable. Now, compare that with Democrats. Only 10% think it's acceptable. Now, let me remind you, 185,000 Americans have died. 
Do you honestly think that if Obama were in charge, they'd say that 185,000 Americans dying is an acceptable number? It doesn't matter who's in charge. That's unacceptable. I don't care if Bernie Sanders or AOC were in charge. That number is unacceptable. No number of deaths are acceptable. But the fact that they say this, that they're willing to give him a pass while 185,000 Americans are dead on his watch, if that doesn't tell you that this is a cult, nothing else will. More on this. When it comes to reported deaths, 64% of Republicans believe there are fewer deaths than what's being reported. Perhaps they believe the numbers are being inflated to hurt Donald Trump or believe Trump when he lies about what the cause of death is and says it's not actually from COVID, it's from some other underlying medical condition. Now, when it comes to why they're Republicans, 58% say it's because they like what Republicans stand for. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing, you know, something, something Trump, something, something abortion. So what this poll shows us is that this sample of Republicans, um, if we can accept that, you know, this is generally applicable, which I'm assuming it is, they just are in a cult. This is a cult. They like what Republicans and Donald Trump stand for. What is that? I don't know what that is. What does Donald Trump stand for? Can anyone name a single policy that Trump stands for other than the wall? Like we hear these vague promises about jobs and protecting American jobs and bringing back manufacturing. But if you don't see action at some point, when do you start to question the cult that you're in? When do you start to question whether or not you are in a cult and you get the courage to leave? Like either way, this is a... Disturbing. Like, there should never be cults of personality around political figures. You should be worried about policy, not the personality of a politician. But Donald Trump, you know, as stupid as he may appear to all of us, this is someone who is persuasive. I mean, he was a celebrity before he became president. He had a lot of followers beforehand. So, you know, it's not going to be too surprising that a celebrity is able to cultivate this sort of loyal following. But in politics, you should never be loyal to a person. You should be loyal to policy. And the minute that that individual deviates from a policy that they promised, you should be against them. Like, just the fact that Trump's older supporters are still supporting him after he said, I'm not going to cut Medicare and Social Security, and now he's saying, mm, we're going to look at that if I get a second term. How can you still support someone like that? You're loyal literally to a fault because his policies are going to harm you. But I mean, again, me saying this, will just cause them to lash out because when you are in a cult, it's about loyalty. You know, it's not about policies or, you know, ever letting any rationality to trickle in. They're in this cult. Uh, you know, there's a bubble around them and they don't want anything to penetrate that bubble, any facts or reason. So uh, this is what we deal with. Like, if you have a large portion of the population in America in a cult, like... What do you do with that information? How do you move forward knowing that these people will never be convinced? They're too far gone. There's nothing you can basically do to convince them. Maybe some of them leave the cult, but mostly uh, I'm assuming these people are going to stay in this cult. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?